You're wrong. You're wrong about what it means to save the bees. Bumblebees, orchid bees, minor bees, minor like digging, not like, you know, they can't be tried as an adult in a court of law. Um, <laughs> When we're fighting for not only our health, but for the health of our surrounding ecosystems and wild spaces, that benefits everybody, hurts nobody. My name is Jack, and I've spent the past few years traveling all over the globe to find some of nature's most unique and dangerous animals. My goal? To show the world that even the most bizarre, or perhaps even deadly life forms on Earth, deserve both our respect and our appreciation. Now in today's video, I am setting out to break down some misconceptions surrounding one of the most universally loved and appreciated groups of insects, bees. These bouncing, buzzing bundles of joy are critical pollinators in ecosystems all over the world. And bees themselves help in producing around one third of the food that we eat here in the United States. Crazy, right? Now, as special and as important as our honeybees are, I'm here today to shed a light on the overshadowed issues within the Save the Bees sentiment. You see, we're not just talking about our agriculturally important honeybees, no. There's a whole other world of bees that desperately needs our help. Interested in helping our powerful pollinators? Well, let's dive right in. Okay, folks, I have a question for you. And I want you to think hard, and I want you to think critically about your answer. What comes to mind when I say, save the bees? I'll give you a moment. Do you have your answer? Are you ready? Do you think of beautiful fields of lovely tranquil honeybees floating from flower to flower. Chances are yes, but also chances are you're wrong. You're wrong about what it means to save the bees. And I am going to tell you why. So my friends, join me on this journey as we venture into the realm of bees and I reveal the truth and the curtain is opened and your mind is altered forevermore on what it truly means to save the bees because you've had it wrong this whole time. So join me and I'll tell you why we need to save the bees, not those bees. Let's go. At this time of year, many of our native wildflowers are in beautiful full bloom, so pollinators were out in full force today. So, what a lot of people don't realize is that the honeybee, which is generally the bee that you're going to run across most often when you are just galloping through fields of wildflowers in your day to day lives. This is an introduced species. And additionally, it is an agricultural species, which means that we as humans are farming billions and billions and billions of honeybees. Now you might say, okay, that sounds great, right? You know, bee farms and we're making honey and they're pollinating crops and everything like that. Yes, of course. Honeybees are extremely critical and important towards our food production here in North America. But because of this very important reason, 
uh, they are not imperiled. Uh, honeybees are not going anywhere. They will not be going anywhere. They are safe, they are established, and they are stable. Now, the other side of this coin is that our native bees, bumblebees, orchid bees, minor bees, minor like digging, not like, you know, they can't be tried as an adult in a court of law. Um, <laughs> these bees, our important native bees, are being displaced and are declining at a rapid rate. And that's really the heart of the issue of save the bees. We're not really talking about our honeybees, which as I mentioned, you know, have protection on all sides. They're critical for agriculture. They're critical um, in their farming. They're critical for honey production. So we keep them, we, we, we set up places for them to be and we culture them by the billions. They're in no real danger. Of course, they can be affected by the same things that affect our native bees like deforestation, pesticide and herbicidal use and all that kind of stuff, but they're not in the same position that our native bees are. Because we've allowed so much deforestation and so much pesticide use and so much herbicide use to kill things that we would consider weeds, we have absolutely begun to decimate the population of not just our native bees, but our native pollinators as a whole. And this is a very scary place to be, folks, because without our native pollinators, our native plants start to dwindle. They start to, they start to be unable to reproduce as efficiently or even at all when we take away the animals that for thousands upon thousands of years have been helping them in propagating themselves, in spreading, in continuing to thrive. And that is not a place we wanna be because we depend on every element of these ecosystems to function properly in order to sustain the health of each of these ecosystems and in turn, sustain the health of our planet as a whole. According to the Center for Biological Diversity, it is estimated that one in six bees are regionally extinct and that over 40% of bee species are threatened with extinction. Of our close to 4,000 species here in the United States, at least 23% of them have seen serious decline. Not only do our native bees have to worry about deforestation, climate change, and pesticide use, but many can become infected with pathogens spread from the introduced honeybees that are competing with them for flowering plants. These numbers are not good, and if we don't push to make changes and preserve wild areas, many of our unique and treasured bee species could fade out of existence. So around this time of year is when I start to see all this stuff about saving the bees. And so I wanted to put out this video to kind of help channel some of my frustration with seeing some of this stuff. You know, you'll see all these heartwarming stories about, oh, you know, a beekeeper saves a, you know, lost colony of bees, you know, in the warmer months of the year, uh, we start to see kind of roaming colonies of honeybees. You know, a queen will leave, then there'll be this big mass and somebody will have to come and relocate it. And I always see these being marketed as some kind of save the bee story where, you know, there are these imperiled species that really need a lot of attention and a lot of work to be done in order to save them from their predicament. Uh, when in reality, this is kind of creating a, uh, a misinformation vacuum, so to speak, where people are seeing these types of stories be advertised on Facebook and TikTok and whatever, and thinking, oh man, that's so sad. I love bees, you know, they're sweet, they're pollinators. We need them for, for our flowers, for our flowering plants, for our food, for agriculture. I don't wanna see bees be in a, in a tight spot. And that's the exact right mindset to have. But when we are only thinking of honeybees, it's this very one dimensional kind of, part of this whole issue and that's really kind of the part of least concern what we're really needing to worry about is our native plants and our native bees and that's the the bulk of this issue many of our native bees are specialist pollinators relying on just a handful of if not just one species of plant for its food in turn these native plants are heavily reliant on the continued pollination provided by these specific native species when a native bee species becomes imperiled, it does not just affect the bee, 
but it can easily affect the native plants and even other species that rely on these native plants for food. When we destabilize ecosystems at their base levels, we can see a cascading domino effect take place. This is one of the main purposes of my channel, to bring awareness that no matter how small or seemingly insignificant an organism may be, they are critical components of their native ecosystems. Every organism has a role to play, and without the harmonious participation of all species in a given ecosystem, the planet fails to thrive. Now you may be sitting at home going, okay, well, I now understand that, you know, it's not that we're worried about our honeybees, it's that it's an issue of our native plants, of our native bees. So what do I do, Jack? Because I really have no idea what I'm supposed to do with this information. And I understand that. So I'm here to teach. I'm here to uh, not only help you, but to help our beautiful native bees. One of the absolute biggest things that you can do is plant a pollinator garden. Now, what is a pollinator garden? A pollinator garden is a garden comprised of flowering plants, preferably those indigenous to your area, that can serve as food plants for both bees, butterflies, and any other types of pollinators. So these are, these are gardens that you can make relatively inexpensive, relatively quickly, and during the spring and summer months when these animals are needing places to feed, needing places to lay their eggs for their caterpillars to grow, these pollinator gardens can be critical safe havens to protect these animals which are quite literally losing more and more and more natural space to exist in with every single year. And that is probably one of the absolute biggest and most important things that you can do at home is creating these kind of pollinator gardens to help our native animals because they're being pushed out not only of natural space as we develop, but by honeybees and introduced species. Uh, and they're losing their weedy plants to herbicides and pesticides, which in turn is not only killing these native plants that we require and need, but it is poisoning and killing not only just these bees, but other insects as well. And that's no bueno, folks. So creating a pollinator garden is a great way to help these animals and their populations. Additionally, pushing for legislation to, to pull back on harmful pesticide use, on developing natural land and natural resources. You know, we need more protected parks and wild areas in order to keep our important insect pollinators alive and thriving. And they can't do that if we pave over every beautiful natural space to throw another Walmart or gas station on top of it. So everything you can do to use your voice to speak out and fight for our beautiful little insect pollinator friends is not only an incredibly important thing to do, but a worthwhile and kind of rewarding thing to do as well. When we're fighting for not only our health, but for the health of our surrounding ecosystems and wild spaces. That benefits everybody, hurts nobody, all right? So that, I will attach some beautiful resources in the description below for you all to check out if you're interested more in pollinator gardens and reaching out and preventing the development of wild areas. Well, I think that's all I need to teach you today about saving the bees. So I hope that this video was formative for you all in creating a new idea in your mind about what it truly means to save the bees. So, my friends, our time has come to an end, and I hope that I was able to leave you with something worthwhile and worth your time coming here and spending with me was to be and will always remain. So... Thank you for watching today. Uh, if I left you with anything, I hope I leave you with this. Uh, uh, the planet is just full of diversity, full of life. And it's really easy to overlook a lot of these tiny miniature ecosystems and smaller animals that we otherwise just would kind of keep out of sight and out of mind. But these are critically important animals and not only do we benefit from their existence, but we need them in order for our existence to continue as smoothly and as perfectly as it could. So I hope that we've got a newfound respect and appreciation for our native bees. I know we love our honeybees and this is not really a honeybee slander video completely. 
Uh, but I do just really want to reiterate that our honeybees, they're good, they're fine, don't have to worry about them. It's our native bees that are just as charismatic, just as important, just as amazing, and so incredibly diverse. And those are the species that really need our extra attention and care at this time. So. Just keep those eyes peeled for your native bee species. Of course, we can thank our honeybees, but it's always a treat to see our native species. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Like I said, if you want to look at any other resources, check out the description below. I have some resources there for what, uh, for some things that could help you in your mission to join me in saving the bees. But other than that, I think, uh, I think our time has come to an end and I look forward to seeing you next week. So until then, thank your lovely bee and pollinator friends. Do your best to fight for their rights to survive and to thrive. And I will see you next week with the next upload. See you then.